Part 2 Salva was not alone. Whenever his heaving stomach woke him, he would hurry to the edge of the camp to vomit and find others there doing the same. At one point, Salva found himself in a line of half a dozen people, all in an identical pose, bent over, holding their stomachs, and waiting for the next wave of nausea. It might have been funny if he hadn't felt so miserable. The group continued to walk through the land of the Attawat. Every day they saw lions, usually resting in the shade of small trees. Once in the distance they saw a lion chasing a topi. The topi escaped, but along the path Salva saw the bones of prey that had not been so fortunate. Salva and Mariel still walked together, staying close to Uncle. Sometimes Uncle would walk with the other men and talk seriously about the journey. At those times, Salva and Mariel would drop back respectfully, but Salva always tried to keep Uncle in sight, and he slept near Uncle at night. One day, the group began walking in the late afternoon with hopes of reaching a watering hole before settling down for the night, but there was no water anywhere, though they searched for miles. They kept walking into the night and through the night. For ten hours they walked, and by dawn everyone was exhausted. Uncle and the other leaders finally decided that the group had to rest. Salva took two steps off the path and fell asleep almost before he lay down. He did not wake until he felt Uncle's hand shaking his shoulder. As he opened his eyes, he heard wailing. Someone was crying. Salva blinked away the sleepiness and looked at Uncle whose face was very solemn. I am sorry, Salva, Uncle said quietly. Your friend. Mariel? Salva looked around. He should be somewhere nearby. I don't remember if he slept near me. I was so tired. Perhaps he has gone to find something to eat. Uncle stroked Salva's head as if he were a baby. I am sorry, he said again. A cold fist seemed to grip Salva's heart.